So this is just a short demonstration to show how you can protect your APIs in type um, using OAuth 2. And we're specifically going to look at the authorization code grant type. Um, and so in this demonstration, we're going to see type acting as both the resource server serving up APIs uh, and also as an OAuth 2 authorization server. So let's get started. Um, we'll go ahead. I'm logged into my type dashboard. So I'm first of all going to add an API. I give it a name. It's of type rest. It's going to be available on this listen path. And in this example, we're just actually going to reverse proxy to HTTP bin. So if I go ahead and configure that, um, there's a lot of configuration I can do within the type dashboard. For the purposes of this demonstration, let's just skip right ahead to the authentication mode. And so we're going to select OAuth2, its authorization code we're configuring. So the, that's the allowed access type and authorized type is also authorization code. We're going to need to provide a login redirect. This is a uh, three-legged OAuth, so there is a um, login form invo involved, albeit we're actually going to fake that, um, but I need to put something in there. Um, we can also configure a notifications URL and shared secret, but I'm actually just going to skip through that at this point. So we've now got an API. Next, um, as is best practice when you're actually protecting any APIs in Tyke, um, we're going to configure a policy. And in that policy, I'm going to select or give access to the API that I've just created. So that's the API called auth code. Um, I'm just going to leave all the defaults. So inside the policy, we can also do things like set rate limits and quotas and throttling rules. Let's just leave all of that as default. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to set that key to expire after 24 hours. So create policy. Next, if I go back to my APIs and on the right hand side of the page, uh, next to the API that we're working with, if we hit the actions drop down, we'll see we've got OAuth clients. So we'll select that. I currently have none. It's a new API. Let me add a new client. So to generate a um, OAuth client in Tyke, um, you can actually use the developer portal. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, let's use the dashboard. Um, I need to provide a redirect URI list. Uh, and so for that, I'm just going to use um, request bin. I'll create a public bin. Let's just copy that. And paste it in here. The key thing with the redirect URI is that you're um, consistent in all the steps of the OAuth process, which we'll, we'll get more into shortly. Select the policy that I just created and hit create. And now I've got a client ID and a secret. And so I'm now going to go through all the steps involved in the authorization code flow. Um, we can follow the type docs for this. So at type.io, um, if you search for OAuth2 and um, within the OAuth2 section, you'll find instructions on how to, uh, how to go through an authorization code um, flow, uh, which uh, at a high level involves three steps. Um, redirect into a login page. We're going to fake that bit, requesting an authorization code, and then exchanging that code for um, an access token. So before I get into that, I'm just actually going to prepare some commands. Um, I'm going to be using the command line. I'm going to be using curl to demonstrate this. So let me just grab my client ID for starters and um, start to prepare my commands. So client ID, pop in the value that was generated. OK, 
Okay, that's that. Next, I'm going to want my API name. And that was auth code. Replace all. Anything else I need at this point? I also need the redirect URI. So let me copy that. This is the value that we want. Let's replace what I had in there previously. Okay, so I think that's it, but if it's not, we'll soon find out. So copy that. And let's, before I actually execute that command, um, let's go back and have a look at the docs. So step one, redirect to a login page. Um, so the URL is, it's a special OAuth endpoint. So it's actually your API listen path on your API gateway um, appended with slash OAuth slash authorize. Um, so in my case, that was, I'm running all of this on my local machine in Docker, but it's localhost port 8080, the name of the API, slash OAuth, slash authorize. Uh, and then we're passing in a content type header, uh, and then uh, this is a post. Um, we're setting response type to code. We're passing the client ID that we just generated and the redirect URI, which in my case is this, um, request bin URL. So let's run that command first of all. And so we've hit my gateway uh, on the API OAuth endpoint. It's issued a 307 redirect to the login redirect form that I configured on my API. So let's just double check that is what we expected. Uh, so that was indeed the login redirect. Okay. Step one complete. Now we don't actually, or I don't have at this point um, to use in this demo, I don't actually have a login form. So I'm kind of going to fake that. Um, so let's imagine that um, we've been redirected to our login form and I've logged into my application and I've been authenticated against some kind of user store. Uh, at that point, the login application would um, call back to Tyke um, with the details that were passed uh, in the request to the login form itself. So the client ID and the redirect URI, um, and it would make a call to um, Tyke, uh, to the Tyke dashboard API, uh, and it would pass um, an authorization header. So that authorization header is um, a dashboard user's credentials. Um, so in my case, my dashboard, hang on a sec, didn't look right. So look again, my dashboard credentials are under my profile or also I could navigate to users, select my user and pick my credentials. And so that is hopefully what I've got in my command here. And yeah, it looks the same. So we've got the dashboard API endpoint, uh, this special authorized client endpoint. Um, we pass the authorization header, uh, content type, www form URL encoded, uh, and then we're passing response type code, again, the client ID and the redirect uh, URI. So let's copy this command. And we have a 
200 response and it has returned us a code, an authorization code. Uh, perfect, okay. So that's step one. We've redirected to the login page, albeit we faked it. Step two, we requested an authorization code. It's now um, the final step in the um, three-legged OAuth authorization code flow. Uh, we need to exchange that code for a token. So, and that command looks like this. So we're gonna call our um, gateway API listen path. So um, in my case, this is localhost 8080. My API name is auth code, and then it's slash OAuth slash token, um, as has described here, in fact. Um, so yes, it's your gateway host with your API listen path followed by slash OAuth slash token. We're going to pass an authorization header, which is going to consist of um, basic authorization. So basically, it's going to be the client ID and client secret of the OAuth client that we generated in the dashboard um, with a colon separator. So if I go to, oh, sorry, and uh, that's the header information, and we're also going to pass um, grant type authorization code. Again, we're going to pass the client ID. We're going to pass the code that we've just been returned. And then we're going to use that same redirect URI again. So let me just have a look at what I've got here. Um, so I need to paste my client secret into here. Go back to APIs. OAuth clients. Copy my secret. And let's base 64 encode that. Okay, and copy that. And we'll create our authorization header. So just checking everything looks okay. Did I pass the authorization? No, I didn't. One last thing I needed to actually copy the authorization code as well. It's not going to work as it is. So this is the step where we're exchanging the auth code for the access token. It's not going to work without the auth code. And that looks like it's worked. We've got a 200 response and there's my access token. So final step, let's actually use it. Uh, and for that, let's use Postman, in fact, no, let's carry on using curl. So, curl, local host, tat slash off code, slash, there's a headers endpoint on HTTP bin, it's a bearer token paste in the access token that we were just provided with and there we go that's come back with a response so that's an api protected in type using oauth2 authorization code.